Okay. Hi guys, I'm Sean. This is Alyssa. Gus is in, in our hearts, hearts. And this is Internet Rabbit Hole Daily. Um, and we are back reacting to something that you folks have been requesting for for a long time. This is Dr. Shashi Thoreau, MP, Britain does owe reparations. And this is on the Oxford Union channel. Uh, in particular, Yash Raghav has been asking mm -hmm. for this like a million times. Uh, Amber Deep says we better get to it. So we better get to it. So I'm guessing uh, it's a Britain MP. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and I've, I'm keen to check this out. Um, what is the word mm -hmm. reparation actually? Well, if, if you've done something wrong to it someone, like you can sort of pay them for pay them back for past bad doings, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Or wrongdoings. So uh, I guess Do we the, need subtitles for. I don't know. I think English, it's entirely right? in English. Okay. So. Oh, maybe he's from India. Madam President. <clears throat> I don't know. Well, gentlemen, ladies of the house. He can be from I, Britain. Standing here with eight minutes uh, in my hands and uh, at this venerable and rather magnificent institution, I was going to assure you that I belong to the Henry VIII School of Public Speaking. That as Henry VIII said to his wives, I shall not keep you long. Ah, uh, <laughs> too soon, too soon. But now finding myself the seventh speaker <gasps> Out of eight in what He's must already seem a rather long evening to you. Oh, neef, I rather feel like Henry VIII's last yeah. wife. I more or less know what's expected of me, but I'm not sure how to do it any differently. Uh. <laughs> Perhaps what I should do is really try and pay attention to the arguments that were advanced by the opposition today. We had, for example, Sir Richard Ottaway suggesting, uh, challenging the very idea that it could be argued that the economic situation of the colonies was actually worsened by the experience of British colonialism. Well, I stand to offer you the Indian example, Sir Richard. India's share of the world economy when Britain arrived on its shores was 23%. By the time the British left, it was down to below 4%. Ooh. Why? Simply because India had been governed for the benefit of Britain. In mm. Britain's rise for 200 years was financed by its depredations in India. In fact, Britain's industrial revolution was actually premised upon the deindustrialization of India. Hmm. The handloom weavers, for example, famed across the world, whose products were exported around the world, Britain came right in. There were actually these weavers making fine muslin, light as woven air, it was said. And Britain came right in, smashed their thumbs, broke their loom, what? imposed tariffs and duties on their cloth and products, and started, of course, uh, taking the raw materials from India wow. and shipping back manufactured cloth, flooding the world's markets with what became the products of the dark and satanic mills of Victorian England. That uh, meant that the weavers in India became beggars, and India went from being a world-famous exporter of finished cloth into an importer, went from having 27% mm -hmm. of world trade to, to less than 2%. Wow. Meanwhile, colonialists like Robert Clive bought their rotten boroughs in England on the proceeds of their loot in India, while taking the Hindi word loot into their dictionaries as well as their habits. Uh, <laughs> while... And the British had the gall to call him Clive of India, as if he belonged to the country, when all he really did was to ensure that much of the country belonged to him. <laughs> By the end of the 19th century, the fact is that India was already Britain's biggest cash cow, the world's biggest purchaser of British goods and exports, and the source of highly paid employment for British civil servants. Mm. We literally paid for our own oppression. And as has been pointed out, the wealthy Victorian British families that made their money out of, out of the slave economy, one fifth of, 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 the, of the elites of, of the wealthy class in Britain in the 19th century owed their money to transporting three million Africans across the waters. And in fact, in 1833, when slavery was abolished, what happened was that a compensation of 20 million pounds was paid, not as reparations to those who had lost their lives or, or who had suffered or been oppressed by slavery, but to those who had lost their property. I was struck wow. by the fact that your Wi-Fi password at this union 
commemorates the name of Mr. Gladstone, the great liberal hero. Well, I'm sorry, his family was one of those who benefited from, the, from this compensation. <laughs> <laughs> Staying with India, between 15 and 29 million Indians died of starvation in British-induced famines. Wow. The most famous example, of course, was the Great Bengal Famine during the Second World War, when four million people died because Winston Churchill deliberately, as a matter of written minuted policy, proceeded to divert essential supplies from civilians in Bengal to sturdy Tommies and Europeans oh, uh, as reserve stockpiles. He said that the starvation of any way underfed, underfed Bengalis mattered much less than that of sturdy Greeks. This is uh, Churchill's mm. actual quote. And when conscious stricken British officials wrote to him. Sorry, there's not a good time to pause. Because everyone, like, I had to, we had to learn about Churchill in school and all that, and they just talk so highly of him. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a complicated issue, isn't it? Pointing out that people were dying because of this, of this decision, he peevishly wrote in the margins of the file, why hasn't Gandhi died yet? So all notions that the British were trying to do their colonial enterprise out of enlightened despotism to try and bring the benefits of, of colonialism and civilization to the benighted heathen. I'm sorry, Churchill's conduct in 43, simply one example of many that gave a lie to this myth. As mm. others have said on the proposition, Violence and racism were the reality of the colonial experience. And no wonder that the sun never sat, set on the British Empire because even God couldn't trust the English in the dark. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Let me take World War I as a, as a very concrete example since the first speaker, Mr. Lee, suggested these things couldn't be quantified. Well, let me quantify World War I for you. Again, I'm sorry, from an Indian perspective, others have spoken of other countries. One sixth of all the British forces that fought on the war were Indian. 54,000 Indians actually lost their lives in that war. Wow. 65,000 were wounded. Another 4,000 remained missing or in prison. Indian taxpayers had to cough up 100 million pounds in that time's money. India what? supplied 70 million rounds of ammunition, 600,000 wow. rifles and machine guns, 42 million garments were stitched and sent out of India, and 1.3 million Indian personnel served. So in the absolutely, war. I know all this because of integral course, the, to the war. The commemoration effort. of the centenary has just taken place, but not just that. India had to supply 173,000 animals, 370 million tons of supplies, and in the end, the total value of everything that was taken out of India. India and India, by the way, suffering from recession at that time and poverty and hunger was in today's money, eight billion pounds. Wow. You want quantification? It's available. Second World War, it was even worse. Two and a half million oh Indians in uniform. I won't belabor the point, but of Britain's total war debt of three billion pounds, in 1945 money, 1.25 billion was owed to India and never actually paid. Wow. Somebody mentioned How much? Scotland. 1.25 billion, he's saying. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Well, like colonialism, I always thought it sucked that there was, it was just another country trying to take over other countries. Pretty much, right? Yeah, yeah. Is that basically what it is? Do they uh, that, like infiltrate? Yeah. I'd love to see how it even happened, like how well, the that's, colonialism that's, even happened. Yeah, and you know what? That's what I was thinking. As soon as we started this video, I was like, hmm, maybe we should have watched uh, sort of a history first. of first. Now, someone did send us mm -hmm. something that just came out recently, so maybe we'll check mm -hmm. that out next and it'll fill in some of yeah. the blanks. Well, the fact is that colonialism actually cemented your union with Scotland. You know, the Scots had actually tried to send colonies out uh, before 1707, they'd all failed, I'm sorry to say. But then, of course, came Union, and India was available, and there you had a disproportionate employment of Scots. I'm sorry, Mr. Mackenzie has to speak after me. Engaged in this colonial enterprise. Some of these guys, don't, some of those guys don't look too happy. They're kind of like, you know, yeah. crossing their arms. I'd be very curious to see the context here, because clearly mm -hmm. there was several other speakers before him. Are they all speaking on the same topic? Um, is his mm -hmm. sort of presentation quite different than the other speakers? I'd be interested to know. Maybe you guys can let us know mm -hmm. a little bit more about this. Soldiers, as merchants, as agents, as employees, and the earnings from India is what brought prosperity to Scotland, even pulled, pulled Scotland out of poverty. 
Now that India's no longer there, no wonder the bonds are loosening. Now we've heard and that girl, arguments. or this woman rather, in the back, she does not seem happy. I've been watching her this whole time. She's got her arms crossed. Maybe she's just cold. I don't know. She's What's wearing that evening dress. There, but, uh, yeah, I'd be freezing cold. There's been a, a mention of the railways. Well, let me tell you, first of all, as my colleague, the Jamaican High Commissioner, has pointed out, uh, railways and roads were really built to serve British interests and not those of the local people. But I might add hmm. that many countries have built railways and roads without having had to be colonized in order to do so. Uh, they... Mm -hmm. They were designed to carry raw materials from mm -hmm. the hinterland into the ports to be shipped to Britain. Wow. And the fact yeah. is that the Indian or Jamaican or other colonial public, their needs were incidental. Transportation, there was no attempt made to match. Was was Jamaica a I, British colony as well? I, yeah, I, I, so you know what? That just shows how ignorant I am, I suppose. Well, I know uh, Canada was. Yeah, I mean, they, they, were, they had their uh, tentacles all over the world. So I, yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't know. be surprised like at Australia, just about anything. Like Australia, Canada, I guess like Scotland, Ireland still sort of are, like Great Britain are all those things, right? Scotland, Ireland. It gets messy. What, if, if we were talking to someone from the UK, I'm sure they would set yeah. us straight. But uh, mm. yeah. Apply to demand for mass transport, none whatsoever. Instead, in fact, the Indian railways were built with massive incentives offered by Britain to British investors, guaranteed out of Indian taxes paid by Indians, with the result that you actually had one mile of Indian railway costing twice what it cost to build the same mile in Canada or Australia hmm. because there was so much money being paid in extravagant returns. Well, we were not We were awful too with the way that we built our uh, railroads um, where we had, I think, uh, labor from China that because uh, remember that Canadian oh, minute yeah. where they, you know, basically were kind of sacrificing their lives to build our railway and to, uh, you know, uh, burrow through those well, mountains and uh, using over. explosives to do so. And but they were being, people losing their lives yeah, as a result. And they were being really like underpaid, like, you know, mm -hmm. it's like instead of paying, um, I guess, Canadians, then they like underpaid people from elsewhere yeah. to come and do this like, hardly, which is just. And dangerous work with no, uh, with, with not any of the sort of safety precautions in place that, yeah. that one would expect. All the profits, controlled the technology, supplied all the equipment, and absolutely all these benefits came as private enterprise, British private enterprise, at public risk, Indian public risk. That was the, the, the railways as an accomplishment. We're hearing about aid. I think it was, uh, it, was, it was, again, Sir Richard Ottawa who mentioned uh, uh, British aid to India. Well, let me just point out that British aid to India is about 0.4% of India's GDP. The government of India actually spends more on fertilizer subsidies, which might be an appropriate what? metaphor for that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. If I may point out- Are they supposed to be getting aid now to pay back the debt, sort of? Is that what he's ta is he talking about, modern times? I'm not sure. Is there sure. still sort of ties? Between uh, the two? I, 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 I don't, way. you know, I think maybe cultural ties or historical ties, yeah. but I'm not but aware of any were, sort of legal or... Um, but he said they were paying like... Governmental aid. sort of ties. He said they're paying India aid or something though. Like what is... Well, if you wanted to back, back up a little bit there, we could maybe listen to that again and I see sort of if we heard can, it, but uh, I guess I just don't understand completely. Well, yeah, we're, I don't think we're yeah. going to understand completely okay. until you guys fill uh, us in in the comments. I'm trying to understand. ...percent of India's GDP, the government of India actually spends more on fertilizer. Oh, the government of India. I totally mixed that up. I thought he was talking about Britain or something. That's why I was like, well, what? he was, he was talking about Britain before that. And, and he's comparing it to the fact he's just basically saying they don't give any money. That's what he's saying. So let's, uh, let's enterprise, move ahead here. British private enterprise at public risk, Indian public risk. That was the, the, the railways as an accomplishment. We're hearing about aid. I think it was, uh, it was, it was again, Sir Richard Ottawa mentioned uh, uh, British aid to India. Well, let me just point British out aid British to aid India. to India. I think, I think what, the, yeah. what he's doing here is he's sort of dismantling some of these things that maybe previous speakers have said, or maybe just other people have said traditionally, which is like, oh, well, we built the railroads. We, we gave aid. We did this. We did the other thing. And he's saying, well, no, all these things were in your own self-interest. It mm -hmm. was, it left us worse off than, than we were to begin with. Yeah. You basically came in and looted our resources, et cetera, et cetera. So I think what 
he's trying to do is is um you know sort of put a more realistic sort of light on these yeah, things and say reveal it's what not the reality uh, was. yeah exactly yeah is about 0.4% of India's GDP. The government of India actually spends more on fertilizer subsidies, which might be an appropriate metaphor for that argument. <laughs> if I may point out as well. If I may point out as well that, um, that as my fellow speakers from the proposition have pointed out there have been incidents of racial violence. So he's had fellow speakers. Yeah, like opposite. as far as I can tell, he's what the seventh speaker or something. There's one more right. to come after okay. him. So it, it. Oh, I thought you were wondering about that, but you were talking about if there was like, uh, like they're all saying their side. I think so. Yeah, I'd obviously. Be, maybe the question was. I think they're just sort of bringing this Britain, stuff to light. Or, or does Britain or Britain does owe reparations, yeah. and then each of the speakers okay. has their own opinion on that. Um, I'm getting right, the yeah. sense that yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, his yeah. his perspective is radically different than some of the other speakers. I could be wrong. Well, the Scottish guys that are going to speak after are they going to be in opposition? <laughs> I don't know. We'd have to check out the uh, the whole picture or the yeah, whole of thing to, to see, I guess. Yeah. Bloodshed of transportation, in India's case, even of one of our, our last Mughal emperor. Yes, maybe today's Britons are not responsible for some of these depredations, but the same speakers are pointed with pride to their foreign aid. You're not responsible for the people starving in Somalia, but to give them aid, surely the principle of reparations mm. for what is for the wrongs that have That's been done. That's a good point. Cannot be denied. It's been pointed out, for example, the dehumanization of Africans in the Caribbean, the massive psychological damage that has been done, the undermining of social traditions, of property rights, of, of the authority structures of these societies, all in the interests of, of, of British colonialism. Mm. And the fact remains that many of today's problems in these countries, including the persistence, in some cases, the creation of racial and ethnic and religious tensions, were the direct result of the colonial mm, experience. That makes sense. So there mm -hmm. is a moral debt that needs mm -hmm. to be paid. Mm -hmm. Oh, she, she was nodding her head, the, the girl with her arms. She was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so okay. it seems like she's uh, just maybe cold, not, you know, displaying. Uh, this is buggy me, sorry. Oh. How do I fix it? I, you fix it when we're done the video, I think. It's, I have no idea. I don't it's really know how distracting those things me. Happen. It's like coiled. It's got the coils messed up. Uh, reparations elsewhere. Well, I'm sorry, Germany doesn't just give reparations to Israel. It also gave reparations to Poland. Perhaps some of the speakers here are too young to remember the dramatic picture of Chancellor Willy Brandt on his knees in the Warsaw Ghetto in 1970. And there are other examples. There is uh, yeah. Italy's reparations to Libya. There's Japan's to Korea. Even Britain has paid reparations to the New Zealand Maoris. Hmm. So it's not as oh, if okay. this is something the native peoples of New Zealand. Of that's going to somehow open some sort of nasty Pandora's box. No wonder Professor Lewis reminded us that he's from Texas. There's a wonderful expression in Texas that summarizes the arguments of the opposition. All hat and no cattle. Ah. Uh. Now. But what is that? If All I hat and no kettle? A no what cattle. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's it's you're a fraud. You're sort of not what you put yourself yeah, okay. on to be, etc. I said kettle, uh, like a tea kettle. Yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I can just quickly look through the other notes I was scribbling while they were speaking. <laughs> that lady likes the joke. Yeah, I told you. Yeah, she's right there. Oh, that she's, woman. She's yeah, looking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like she thought it was so funny. <laughs> I want to hear him tell it again. See your reaction. Yeah. Even Britain has paid reparations to the New Zealand Maoris. So it's not as if this is something unprecedented or unheard of that's going to somehow open some sort of nasty Pandora's box. No wonder Professor Lewis reminded us that he's from Texas. There's a wonderful expression in Texas that summarizes the arguments of the opposition. All hat and no cattle. <laughs> No. Ah, <laughs> it took, it her, took her a second to her took her a second. second to get it. She's like, just like you. She was trying to think like kettle, ke uh, oh kettle. But then when yeah. she got it, like she yeah, yeah. she's really enjoying it. If I can just quickly look through the other. So this does appear to be a debate because he was taking was notes right <laughs> during democracy and rule of law. <laughs> Let me say with the greatest possible respect, you can. It's a bit rich to oppress, enslave, kill, torture, maim people for 200 years and then celebrate the fact that they're democratic at the end of it. We yeah. 
She's still laughing. <laughs> what of an awkward. She's loving it. Because then he went into this like. This is her guy. But he went into like all the heavy, deep, like massacre stuff. And then she was still she agrees. laughing at the previous joke. I, I think she's just loving the whole thing. Yeah. She loves the fact that this guy's up here uh, speaking truth yeah. to power here. So many characters here, like the serious, the serious lady, the laughy giddy lady. That's right. Got all sorts of people in the room. We were denied democracy, sir. We had to snatch it, seize it from you. With the greatest of reluctance, mm. it was conceded in India's case after 150 years of British rule, and that too with limited franchise. Yes, indeed, ma'am. The opposition spoke quite highly of Greek and Athenian democracy on which the West should pride itself, and spoke of liberty and equality in that same name. The Athenian democracy was only functioning because of the slave society on which it was built. That's mm. the nature of colonization. All right, I don't think that needs uh, needs contradiction, not for me at any rate. Ah. <laughs> but yeah, she... It's nice that they can have people speak and stuff, and, like, there must be... Ah, oh, they would be so frustrating, right? I'd be fascinated to hear the... the not only the speaker that's going to come after this guy, but mm -hmm. some of the ones that came before. I'd be really interested to hear what the sort of flavor of the conversation was before this guy got on the stage. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if I, if, I may just, if I may just point out, I think the arguments made by a couple of the speakers, the first speaker, Mr. Lee in particular, conceded all the evil atrocities of colonialism, but essentially suggested that reparations won't really help, they won't help the right people, they'll be used as a propaganda tool, they'll embolden people like Mr. Mugabe. It's always nice how in the old days, you know, uh, I'm sorry to say that uh, the, the people of the Caribbean used to frightened their children into behaving and sleeping by saying Sir Francis Drake would come after them. <laughs> that was a legacy of that effect. Wait, now, I now missed, it's Mugabe I will be there. They, they, used to scare their, they, they, they used to scare their children by saying basically uh, the colonizer leader was going to come oh, and get okay, them at okay, night okay, or something. Okay. You know, kind of like the boogeyman. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the, the new sort of Sir Francis Drake of our times. The fact is, the fact is very simply, sir, that we are not talking about reparations as a tool to empower anybody. They're a tool for you to atone mm. for the wrongs that have been done. And I... I take responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. I am quite prepared to accept the proposition that you can't evaluate, put, a, put a, a monetary sum on the kinds of horrors people have suffered. Certainly no amount of money can expiate the loss of a loved one, as, as mm -hmm. somebody pointed out there. Uh, you're not going to be able to figure out an exact amount. But the principle is what matters. The fact is that to speak blithely of sacrifices on both sides, uh, as an analogy was used here, a burglar comes into your house ransacks the place, stubs his toe, and you say, well, he, there was a sacrifice on both sides. Ah. That, I'm sorry to say, oh, no. is, not unacceptable, is not an acceptable argument. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. The truth is that um, we are not arguing specifically that vast sums of money need to be paid. The proposition before this house is the principle of owing reparations, not the fine points of how much is owed to whom it should be mm. paid. Hmm. The question is, is there a debt? Does Britain hmm. owe reparations? That's more of a... As far as I'm He just wants at least, at the least, an acknowledgement. An acknowledgement. Yeah. Hmm. The ability to acknowledge a wrong that has been done, mm -hmm. to simply say sorry, mm -hmm. will go a far, far, far longer way mm -hmm. than some percentage of GDP in, 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 form, in the form of, of, of aid. What is required, it seems to me, is accepting the principle that reparations are owed. Personally, wow. I'd be quite happy if it was one pound a year for the next 200 years hmm. after wow. the last 200 years of Britain and India. Hmm. Thank you very much. Wow. wow. How is his opponents very, gonna argue with that? Yeah, eh? he's very well spoken. Wow. That he didn't, really he doesn't give, I'd hate to be the guy that's following him. The next guy coming up to the speech or coming up to the pulpit there. Holy. Well, he said that at the beginning and he was like, oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. To the next to guy that has me. to come out. Wow. Yeah. Because it was, it's sort of like at the end of the day, he said, you know, even if you sort of, uh, 
sort of disagree with sending large sums of money over to India to pay yeah. for reparations. I'm not even really asking for that. I would be happy with a ceremonial one pound being sent every year as an acknowledgement that a wrong was done. And so, uh, boy, yeah. there was a lot to uh, dig into there. Oh, well, a lot of times people don't want to acknowledge those things because they're embarrassed um, and, and stuff. So... Jeez, well, uh, we I want to give a, a big shout out to uh, Yash in particular, who's been asking us uh, for that one for quite some time. So we want to thank you for that one, friend. Thank Sometimes you. it does take us a little bit bit or a long bit to get to something Forever. i'm really glad we did if you guys want to keep on top of this stuff with us moving forward well i'm gonna ask you to click that subscribe button click the little bell icon choose all from the drop down menu so you can get updated every, every time, time we upload, upload a new video, video if you enjoyed this video please let us know by clicking the thumbs up button and leaving your thoughts in the comments down below keep on sending stuff to the email irh subtitles at gmail.com we really appreciate it that's right we love hearing from you guys this is internet rabbit hole daily IRH, IRH, sign sign off. bye guys bye, -bye guys It's okay.